All right, so over a long period of time, the inductor will eventually look like a short circuit and the capacitor will look like an open circuit. So let's see here if I can do that. Oops, I guess I have to click on that again. See if I can make this a little bit of a bigger open circuit. All right, so we have an open circuit for the capacitor and a short circuit for the inductor. Let me go back to my pen. So I was able to manipulate this, uh, this drawing, but what's important here is that you redraw the circuit so that you can analyze it correctly. I think it'll make it a lot easier. And this inductor is a short circuit because the voltage L di dt, this is no longer changing. So that's why this is equal to zero. And so I'll, to figure this out, you just look at those voltage current relationships here. The voltage is no longer changing. Uh, so that means there's no current flowing. So that's an open circuit. Now, if we start with the inductor first, the energy in the inductor is one half L I squared. And so we have to find the current if we want to know the energy stored. And the current, uh, you know, this inductor, if it's shorty, short, sh short, it's basically shorting out this resistor. And if this capacitor isn't open, no current is flowing this direction either. So if I were just to redraw this circuit uh, with all that in mind, I could have R1 and just um, R3, just these two resistors in the circuit. So the current would just be Vs over uh, the R equivalent, which is R1 plus R3, and that turns out to be 0.75 amps. So if I plug that into our energy equation, I'm going to get 7.03 or so millijoules. Now, if we consider the capacitor energy, we have an open circuit and a short circuit for the inductor. So to get the um, a capacitor energy, we have the energy for the capacitor is one half C, then the voltage across the capacitor squared. And if we want to know the voltage across the capacitor, we can look at, well, what is it connected to? It's connected to these two nodes, which is the same as where, where R3 is connected. It's also connected between two nodes. And R3 is actually part of our circuit where the current is flowing. That one's shorted out. And so if we find the voltage drop across R3, that will be equal to the voltage across uh, across the capacitor. So VR3, we can use Ohm's law. We already know the current. I can take that IL that we just solved for because it's flowing through that short and then continues over here to R3. So that times R3, we would get 27 volts. And then I can plug that into here and for the energy stored by the capacitor, we would end up with 14.58 or 0.6 uh, millijoules. And that's it. We found the energy stored in the capacitor and in the inductor. And here's a second example. I think this is our last example, uh, but there's quite a bit that we wanna find here. We wanna know the voltage for the inductor and the capacitor at time, this is time, time equals zero. And infinity here just means after a long time has changed, uh, 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 um, passed, and so all the transients are gone, things have either charged up or charged down. And then we also wanna know the current, right at time equals zero, right when the switch is closed, and then also after a long time has elapsed. So. I think in this case, it'll be important to draw three, zero, so redraw uh, the circuit and at three different time periods. At T equals zero minus, so that's right before the switch is closed, since it's closed at 
t equals zero. So then also uh, draw it for t equals zero right when the switch is closed, right at that moment, and also draw it a third time, redraw this circuit a third time at t equal infinity, so after a long period of time has elapsed. And that will help you to obtain these values that we're looking for. And just for your convenience, I put the voltage current relationships here for the vol inductor and the capacitor on the bottom of the screen.